Welcome to In An Instant, my name is Ben, this is The Instant Lounge, and today to celebrate the fact that we've just surpassed 10,000 subscribers, which is just a lovely round number, I want to do a little Q&A session with you, my lovely, beautiful viewers, arguably the most beautiful viewers on YouTube. Um, I like the idea of doing a Q&A because we can cover some topics that are quick and maybe wouldn't require a full video and it's fun to just sort of burn through them and just get you guys involved because I love you and I'm in love with you. All right. Let's get into it. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. All right, our first question comes from Pola Stories. I'm following you since day one. That's phenomenal. What do you think of the new land camera project? Okay, well, if you're not familiar with this, um, new land camera is this startup um, by a lovely fellow who has figured out a way to modify the backs of the old land cameras from the past that shot pack film um, so that they can shoot with integral film. And he's doing this with 3D printed parts and it's very sort of intricate, more intricate I think than many 3D printed things like this. Um, so he's in his prototype stage right now. He will be testing it. I'm very excited about this. <laughs> Let me just put this out there. Very excited about this project. I think it's amazing to be able to repurpose these hi this historical cameras. These are some of the best cameras ever made by Polaroid. Um, really beautiful objects that will be coming back to life with the currently produced Polaroid film. I think it's an amazing idea and I really can't wait to try it. You will absolutely be seeing a video about this and uh, that's that's my opinion about the new land camera project. I'm hype. Hype train is leaving the station. Next question comes from Pinky, Delaca, and Chabot Photos. What do you think about your growth since you started the channel? Um, well, I've tried not to be too focused on growth uh, because I feel like you get wrapped up in the numbers, it drives you nuts, it's really not healthy, I don't think, to focus too much on growth, but I do care about putting out quality content and growing the audience, so I'm happy to be reaching this 10K mark. I'm very excited to reach 10 million subscribers, which I figure will probably happen in the next year, um, but, you know, long story short, um, I'm just riding the wave. I'm putting out videos that I personally like making, and I think that that's coming through on camera, and whether or not people watch, I hope so, but I can't force it, so I don't stress it too much. Next question's from Turbocharge Transit Photos. If you could bring back any film stock, instant or celluloid, which would you pick? This is an amazing question. I took a minute thinking about this because it's a loaded question. There's so many choices, um, but I landed on the Polaroid Peel Apart 4x5 film. Um, I think that is really one of my favorite, it's just, these are the boxes of it right here. Um, it's one of my favorite kinds of films to shoot. Um, it's, you got the nice large format experience shooting with it, shooting with Polaroid. You get the magic of the chemistry, but with significantly more control because of the tools you're using. And, and it's that Peel Apart magic. And I'm very thankful that New 55, the company, is trying to revive this format, but beyond that, um, it's really unclear if there will ever be a future in it. And it's tough because, you know, with the Peel Apart 8x10, at least Polaroid, the newer company, replaced it with 8x10 Integral Film, but there's no equivalent of 4x5 Polaroid Integral Film, which would be sick. And uh, I don't know, maybe someone could figure that out. Probably not. Birgit B. Art says, what's your dream analog product that's not on the market yet? Again, a question that, that you, you, there's so many options, but <laughs> um, I think the number one thing that I would like is more diversity in ways that you could shoot current Polaroid Integral film. Going back to the new land camera idea, um, I would like more stuff like that. I would like four by five backs that could shoot Polaroid Integral film. Um, just more options, more third party options. We're using really old equipment and I would love some new backs for medium format cameras, large format cameras, stuff like that. And then sort of in the non-instant world, I would love, I would love some high speed higher speed slide film. I mean, we've got 100 speed slide film is the fastest we've got right now. I would love Ektachrome 200, 400. Uh, E200 was such a sick film stock and it was like uh, compatible with being pushed to 800. So that would be very nice. Birgit also asked, where's that Diana instant selfie of us? Well, it's right here. Oof, look at those two. You can't beat that duo. Henry.Rose asks, are you planning to make a book? Good question, Henry. Um, if you're sort of newer to this sphere, I did release a book last year called Roadside Hudson Valley, which I'm very proud of. Um, and that is still available to buy on Blurb. Uh, I did a sort of a pre-order version where a bunch of people could get signed copies. Those are gone, but the you can still get the book. Um, and uh, may as well just mention this here, I am working on a second book uh, that is much longer and bigger project for me. So I'm very excited about that. 
more to come on that. Diet Hellboy asks, have you tried to mod your Polaroids yourself or have you bought any you like? This is a good question because I'm personally um, not very good at modifying things with screwdrivers or soldering things. I, it's really just not my thing and it's not really where my like interests lie in this, in this industry, but uh, tons of people are and they're amazing at it and they've come up with incredible modifications and of course I wanna use them. So I have dabbled a little bit. Helicord Camera released an iType modification for SX70s and SLR680s and you do have to modify the base of the camera in order to install it. That was a very scary process for me, but it was actually very easy. The hardest part was removing the skin on the bottom of the camera. Uh, but uh, besides the Helicord mod, uh, the one that I'm using the most is the Resovat Power Ranger, which is a similar thing, where you screw this into the base of the SLR680 or the SX70, and it you know, creates a little baby bump down there. But it allows you to shoot I-type film in the 680 and the SX70, and that is really, really big for me. It saves money on film. You get to use the special edition film types. There's really just no limits to what you can do anymore, and uh, we hate limits. We hate them a lot. The Integral Initiative says, what is the origin of your rating system? The doinker to big for business scale. Okay, it's a great question. Um, I wouldn't quite say it's a scale, like it doesn't go from Doinker to big for business, um, but as concepts, you know, we're talking things like hype, we're talking things like Doinker, we're talking about things like big for business. Those are just sort of things that I or my friends have said and I decided, why would I make a YouTube channel if I'm not gonna talk like nuts like I normally talk? I talk sort of insane, like I, I'm butchering the English language every day and it's very fun. So I figured I may as well port that into the channel. Um, the concepts of doinkers, the concepts of things being big for business, that's just stuff I'm throwing around every day. So to, to bring that into the Polaroid universe was my pleasure and honor, really. Anthony Plessia says, how was the Polaroid Go selling? Well, Anthony, I, I don't have access to the sales numbers at Polaroid. What I can say is I hope it's doing well. Um, Polaroid uh, took a bit of a risk here, releasing like a higher price point uh, camera and film than Fuji's Instax stuff. But you know, they're relying on the Polaroid brand name. I think it's the, the camera is incredible. I think if you go to a store and you see this and you see the Fuji cameras, you would buy this because it's, it's the cutest thing I've ever seen. And it's amazing that it even can take photos. Um, so I think, I hope that you know this rollout works out for them. I don't know how it's doing, but I but I hope well because the better the Go does, the better everything else does. It's like when people would ask about the Polaroid Lab, you know, if the lab does good and people buy a film, that's good for Polaroid, and that means good things for us overall. Jules Dillon asks, "How are you, Jules? I'm doing fantastic. I'm doing even better now that I that I've seen your name here. It just brings a smile to my face." Instant Cam asks, "Do you have any thoughts on sustainability with instant photography?" It's a toughie because I personally think if you are really invested in sustainability or environmentalism and that is like a core drive for you, you probably shouldn't shoot instant film. Probably shouldn't shoot film at all. Uh, it's a lot of materials being used, a lot of chemistry is being used, really not good for the environment at all. Uh, I, I like that Polaroid in general can be sort of broken down, like you can tear apart the case and with iType film not having a battery, you can recycle the plastic and then the cardboard. Um, so it can be minimized in that way, but I think in general, it's not very sustainable and that's just something you need to know. And it might impact the long-term viability of, of instant film and film in general, but I don't know. It's crazy how that sent Fuji away with, with Velvia 100. That was insane. Like this film is discontinued because the US government decides this tiny, tiny, tiny bit of chemistry inside this film stock is now completely banned. Like if that, that could happen tomorrow with Polaroid film, who the heck knows? Um, that's certainly scary and something to think about, but we're, but we're not freaking out about that. We're not freaking out about that at all. Drog go. Oh, this is the first. This is the first name that I've had serious trouble pronouncing. So that's not bad. Drog go. Drog. Drogco G I W. I. I don't know. Can Can you show some of your favorite pictures taken by each film type? This is a very uh, difficult 
thing to approach. Um, I'm just gonna throw up some samples right here. They're sort of arbitrary. They can't be said to be my, my favorite shots of each film type, um, but they are certainly photos that I decided, hey, this would be a good example of what these films look like if that's what you're curious about and just seeing the differences between them. Um, I haven't really done a video like that because there aren't that many different types of Polaroid or in instant film, but uh, here are some examples. Jacob Cook Photography asks, are you happy with the current SX-70 formula? I find it really hit or miss. Well, Jacob, I understand why you're saying that. The SX-70 film is, I think, the most temperamental film stock. Um, if you have underexposure, the color shifts a lot more than it does on 600. Um, it is very high contrast, so it can be difficult to nail exposure in general. I personally find that if you're shooting in broad daylight and you're using the sun behind you, it's gonna give you really consistent results. But I do understand why you would say that it might be uh, a little bit less consistent because it does vary quite a bit if you're shooting in other kinds of lighting scenarios. However, I would say to this day, the SX-70 film is offering you stuff that you just can't get anywhere else and it's a very special film stock and I really hope it stays around for years to come. Your Uncle Earl asks, in your opinion, what is the ugliest Polaroid camera and the most beautiful? Okay, so I think that my, my default answer for the, the ugliest Polaroid camera is usually the 1-600, um, but I'm gonna sort of subvert that a little bit. I'm gonna go with the Polaroid P. I think it is the sort of uh, uggo one-step evolution that nobody really wanted. Nobody wanted the top to be rounded like that. Uh, nobody asked for that. And again, the SX-70 would normally be the easy pick for the most beautiful Polaroid camera, so I'm gonna go with the Polaroid 850, which was a roll film camera from Polaroid that was one of their earlier models. It's really big, it's really beautiful. I've had it in my collection for a while, and I love that camera, it's so cool. Just shows the like early design quality of Polaroid cameras in a big way. Han Fawn asks, how did you get to be the king of peel apart? I wouldn't say it. <laughs> Han, you're too much. You're too much. Alexa J. Begrill said, nothing, they didn't type anything in. I didn't even know that that was possible and I just wanted to mention this uh, because I think you broke Instagram and did something that I've never seen done before. So very impressed by that. Vlad Mercia said, can I have some of your FP100C? Absolutely, um, just reach out to me, provide me with your phone number, your address, so I can send it out, uh, your social security number, uh, your mother's maiden name, the name of your childhood best friend, the make and model of your first car. Paul Rogers One asks, opinions on the Polaroid Go chemistry seeming to lag behind 600 film. This is an interesting question because I have noticed a couple of differences between uh, normal 600 film and the Go film, but I don't think that that's the film. I think the chemistry is the exact same stuff. And in the right lighting conditions, I think they look very similar. I think the difference you're probably seeing is the lens of the camera, um, the way light is entering the camera, and I, and I think there are some differences in the way the photos look, but I really don't think it's a difference of the film. NVML says, who do you identify most with all the passengers of Oceanic Flight 815? I'd be remiss if I didn't allow a lost question through here. Um, it's really my responsibility as a losty. Um, I think a norm core answer, but I'm gonna go with Hurley. The guy is very friendly. He's looking for a good time. He's, he's crashed in this uh, incredible island and he doesn't seem like too upset about it. And I think I'd probably be the same way. I'd be like, this is a, this is a really nice vacation. Well, I'm gonna cut it off here for video one. There will be a part two, click below if it's out yet. Um, thank you for watching in an instant. Uh, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and uh, stay tuned for more reviews, breakdowns, shoots, guides, tips, tricks, all things instant. Bye and thank you for the 10,000 of you that subscribed because that was a very nice thing to do.